don't talk a lot about WCW around these parts, mostly because the name of the channel is What Culture WWE, Mwah. and also because the quality of the promotion before it died made us really, really sad. But for a few golden years in the late 90s, WCW pride itself on being better than its competition at every turn. Vini, Vidi, Vici, which is Latin for Judy Bagwell on a forklift. We recently did a list of the worst botches in WWE history, that did okay, and in a spirit of healthy competition, now it's WCW's time to... But what's the opposite of shine? I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are the 10 worst botches in WCW history. Number 10, a three-way dance just ends. Recently, the women of NXT botched the ending of a fatal four-way with Emma accidentally picking up a win over Becky Lynch that she shouldn't have. Now, that was a pretty bad botch, right? Well, WCW have it beat. In a three-way dance between Paisley, Tigress and Major Guns in August 2000, about 10 seconds into the match, Tigress accidentally pins Guns with a bridge. It was the first move of the match and it botched the finish. The announcers didn't know what was happening, asked, is the match over? Did the ref count to? What's going on? Whilst the other ladies kicked the crap out of guns for failing to kick out. Then amidst all the confusion, the match just ends and everyone moves on with their lives. Number 9. Randy Savage almost kills Lil Nate. For casual fans, Lil Nate is Charles Robinson, a plucky little boy scout of a referee who earned his nickname by him and nature boy Ric Flair, having seemingly the same hairdresser. He was a heel referee who'd often favour the four horsemen in their matches, and so Randy Savage decided to take matters into his own hands and nearly kill Charles Robinson. In 1999, Big Nate and Lil Nate were wrestling Savage and Medusa for some reason. The finish of the match involved Savage dropping his famous elbow onto the tiny referee. Lil Nate didn't know how to protect himself because he's a referee and suffered several broken ribs, crushed vertebrae in his back and a collapsed lung. Leave him alone, you bullies. He's just a little nature boy. Number eight, the fireball. It's just so embarrassing. Now, we've already talked about this much reviled rematch between Hulk Hogan, who, and the ultimate warrior. After all, watching it is like watching an oak table very slowly fall down some stairs. But you can't have a list of worse botches without this lame duck. Hulk Hogan, who, had a great idea for a set piece. He would blind the ultimate warrior with a fireball. Yep, one old man would hadouken another old man. And this is what happened. No, no, let's see that again. Hulk Hogan misses the warrior, produces a tiny little kiddie flame, which is still enough to burn his own eyebrows. For shame. Number seven, the other shooting star press. In the WWE list, we saw Brock Lesnar spectacularly botch a shooting star press, to which Billy Kidman responds, ha, I was doing that years ago. The shooting star, when done right, is a thing of beauty. In Billy Kidman's hands, it was a weapon of mass destruction. He has botched it many, many times over his career, injuring Paul London and Chavo Guerrero in WWE, and in WCW, breaking Vampiro's nose and orbital bone. Even Kidman himself wasn't safe during a match 1999 with William Regal, then Stephen Regal, Kidman botches the move by catching himself on the ropes, then crumpling to the mat. Ugh. Number 6. Every single Sid Vicious promo. Say what you want about Sid Vicious and he wouldn't be able to respond in a coherent way. There are probably enough terrible Sid promos to fill an entire list, but I don't want to do that because I'll lose my mind. Sid uses words the same way a blender uses vegetables, and suffice it to say they're all terrible botches. But this one is the most magnificent. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall come out to the ring to call Sid dumb because they're reasonable men. Sid responds... <laughs> yeah, that showed them. That showed everybody. Number five, Cactus Jack loses an ear. Yep, this happened on WCW's watch. It took place at an untelevised house show, but whenever a botch involves someone losing a body part, it belongs on the list. Mikkels Foley was wrestling against Vader in Munich and attempted a hangman, which is when the wrestler's head gets caught between the ropes. Two problems with this. One, WCW didn't use ropes, but rather elevator cables covered in rubber. And two, unbeknownst to Mick, they had been tightened to maximum strength earlier in the night after a wrestler had complained about them being too loose. So when Foley caught himself in the hangman, he found himself quickly choking to death. Seconds away from losing consciousness and with the risk of brain damage high, he pulled his head free, ripping off two thirds of his ear in the process. Foley's biggest regret? That the ear loss wasn't worked into an angle. Number four, Nick Patrick chuffs up the biggest WCW main event ever. 1996 to 1997 could be considered the golden years of WCW. The NWO had taken the world by storm and the company was dominating WWF in the ratings. Bret Hart had just joined the company and one of the best storylines WCW ever did was headed towards a big blow off at Starcade 97. Sting had morphed into his crow persona and was set on dismantling the NWO, which under the evil leadership of Hollywood Hogan had all but taken over the company. It had been slowly built over 18 months and all the fans wanted was for Sting to tear apart Hogan. The match booked itself, right? Wrong. 
WCW did what it does best and overbooked the match to smithereens. See, corrupt referee Nick Patrick was supposed to fast count Hogan pinning Sting, at which point Bret Hart would punch out the ref, say, not another screw job, it's not gonna happen again, and restart the match. However, Nick Patrick counted a normal three count. One, two, three, meaning that Sting lost clean and Hart seemed like a confused and bitter asshole by not letting the match end. A big confusing fumble marked the end of one of the biggest storylines of all time. Number 3. Goldberg Ends Bret Hart's Career Speaking of poor Bret Hart, his move to WCW was doomed from the start. After the debacle at Starcade, he had an uninspired run despite winning a number of championships, before his career was tragically cut short at the hands, or rather foot, of Goldberg. The two were wrestling a match at Starcade 1999. Goldberg gave Hart a thrust kick to the head and botched it horribly, giving Bret a huge concussion. The injuries worsened over the next few days, but it all stems from his horrible head injury. Hart was diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome and was forced to permanently retire from active competition. Number 2. Sid's Leg Now this one is graphic, folks. If you're eating, I suggest you stop. During the Sin pay-per-view in 2001, Sid was battling Scott Steiner, Jeff Jarrett and a mystery opponent who turned out to be Road Warrior Animal in the Four Corners match. See, management wanted Sid to add an aerial move to his arsenal, which he was dead against, but against his will, climbed to the second turnbuckle. He leapt to try and execute a flying big boot, and this happened. Sid landed all 300 pounds of his frame on his left leg, which completely broke the bone piercing the skin. I don't like it. No, no, I don't like it at all. And nor did the WWE, who have edited it out of the broadcast on the WWE Network. Yuck. Number one. The Shockmaster. It had to be, of course it did, the most spectacularly botched debut of any wrestler ever. At Clash of the Champions in 1993 on a live segment of Flair for the Gold, Sting and Davey Boy Smith revealed who their partner would be for a War Games match at Full Brawl. And then this. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most iconic botches in the history of wrestling. By the way, it's worth mentioning, at the War Games match in question, the Shockmaster actually won the match for his team, submitting via a bear hug of all people, Booker T. So at least he got that before disappearing forever. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.